Hello everybody watching and welcome to our presentation which is called Autonomous Learning Perceptions Before and During COVID, a Comparative Study. My name is Gareth Simer. My name is Alma Sanchez Linares. My name is Yarene Arena. This study originally was focused on how students in my Escuela Normal in the city of Puebla, Mexico, did or did not adapt to autonomous learning practices in their normal face-to-face -face classroom input at the start of the second semester, way back in January of this year. The original plan was to implement a comparative study of two groups studying English who had similar characteristics. Both were beginning their second semester. Both groups studied at an A1 level. Both groups were studying to become primary teachers. And both groups were quite used to having teacher-centered classes. The initial interviews took place in January and the plan was to run one course with more teacher-centered activities and control and the other was with a more student-centered and autonomous approach and then to see how the two classes behaved and performed. Of course we wanted to know how both students and teachers felt about having a more autonomous mode of learning and then in March we all know that the COVID pandemia arrived and unfortunately put that original plan to bed for the time being. So therefore now this project has become an investigation into how the learners have managed or not managed into being forced I suppose into a more autonomous approach looking at the positives and the negatives. Are the students now at a point where autonomy is seen as the norm? Or is this new approach seen as a temporary inconvenience that they have to endure until they can revert back to the normal teacher-centered classes that they were used to having? What is autonomous learning? In recent times, the term autonomy and autonomous learning have become relevant in higher education due to the new ways that the students interact and learn. First of all, it's important to mention what is not autonomous learning. We feel that this clarification is necessary because when our participants were asked if they had considered necessary to promote autonomous learning in the future teaching practice, some of them replied. Yes, but it's not good learners learn without a teacher. Well, also talk about the fact that we must promote collaborative work. It is not the ideal to work on our own. I consider autonomous work important, but sometimes you can do better things as a team. For autonomy is important, and if it starts to develop at an early age, and in the future they will be autonomous and avoid academic problems. Analyzing this opinion, we think that at some point students mean or think that autonomous learning is to work in isolation. So let's remember that autonomous learning is not learners learning without a teacher, learners working entirely alone, or something that all learners naturally have. But autonomous learning is the ability of learners to make informed decisions about their learning. In other words, learner autonomy refers to the principle that learners should take more responsibility for what they learn and how they learn it. Moreover, it is significant to highlight the different issues and challenges that arise from the term autonomous learning and its presence within the higher education context. In 2018, a study conducted in the University of Quintana Roo, Mexico, Farmer, Nugamendi and Piña found that even administrators 
learners and teachers truly understood the implication and the essential word of autonomous learning, there has been a reluctance to fully embrace it. Due to the difficulties related to lack of experience, learning preferences, dependency on the teacher, educational background, lack of training of educational stakeholders, teachers' skills and profiles, national educational policies, and administrative services. In other words, such difficulties can be summarized in three key issues, time, commitment, and attitude towards autonomy within their context. So why is it important to have autonomous learning within the context of the Escuelas Normales? So having interviewed the students, some very interesting findings came out from what they said and I'll outline some of the reasons here. So firstly they mentioned personal and professional development as being important and they mentioned the fact that they wanted to develop as citizens as well as teachers. They wanted to develop life skills as well as teaching skills. So this was interesting in the sense that I saw the students as not only teachers but as people wanting to be educators in a wider sense. They talked about potential. So the word potential came up and wanting to develop themselves as people, as teachers, so improving their teaching practice was seen as a very good reason for adopting autonomous learning practices. Impact on family, friends, on society, on the students that they teach, having a positive impact and having good habits that the students in their classrooms, their teaching colleagues may learn from. They also mentioned critical thinking abilities being enhanced, their ability to take control and um, be in charge of making decisions in their careers, in their lives, as being very useful um, skills that autonomous learning would enhance. Uncovering and discovering new ideas. So finding out things that maybe traditional teaching methods wouldn't show them was seen as a very good reason to learn new ideas. And finally, they mentioned the notion of leadership. So enhancing their creative skills, enhancing their initiative through autonomous learning was seen as a very strong reason to continue with autonomous learning. And now, let's talk about the characteristics of this research. But first, let's remember that this study compares the students' and teachers' perception on autonomous learning in three different moments. Right now, the part that is focused on students will be explained in a minute. The context of this study was the Benemérito Instituto Normal del Estado, Juan Crisóstomo Bonilla, in Puebla City. About the participants, well, at the very beginning of this study, it was contemplated 120 EFL students from the Licenciatura en Educación Primaria. The instrument was a survey. As the initial goal changed throughout the time, the format of this service conducted did it too. First survey was a printed version and applied last January. The second survey was applied in May and the third one in September. Both were answered via Google Forms because of the pandemic situation. The methodology is a mixed method approach as quantitative and qualitative data were analyzed. It is worth mentioning that even in the first questionnaire, the number of participants was 120. The sample chosen for the comparative analysis was just 55 students as it was the number of answers received in the latter questionnaires. 
we would like to share some of our findings with you. As you can see, the table displays three periods to show how the perception of learners vary from January to September this year. Overall, we can see that the participants saw themselves as being more autonomous learners because they felt they had the necessary skills in the month of September. To begin with, the highest percentage in the three months shown was September with 78.2%. The other results show that at the beginning of our study in January, nearly 31% of participants considered themselves as being non-autonomous learners, compared with only 5.4% in September. Some participants felt uncertain about their answer as reflected in a neutral response given in the months May and September. This second table shows the responses of if the participants found themselves being more autonomous as a result of the COVID lockdown and their online learning experiences. Surprisingly, there was a small decrease in the number of participants who saw themselves as autonomous in May in comparison to September. Unexpected, as we felt that participants would have been more independent and capable of working autonomously by September. First of all, in May, 69.1% of the participants answered that they perceived themselves as being more autonomous due to the lockdown through being pushed to work online. However, in the month of September, less people express the same sentiments. We can also notice a rise in the percentage of participants who prefer to provide a, neut a neutral answer. The table shows that after four additional months, more in lockdown, the percentage of participants who did not consider themselves as autonomous learners had also dropped. From a figure of 10.9% in May, this had fallen to just 7.3% by September. Therefore, we can complement the previous results with the following two questions that were taken from September survey, and here we go. We took question number two, as this was a statement that students had to recognize that they felt that they were adapting themselves to this new learning modality that requires more autonomy. And the results are the following. 87.3% agree in totally agree with this statement against 12.7% who were neutral with this, since nobody answered in disagreement. Moreover, in question 15, students were asked if they considered to promote autonomous learning within their future teaching practice and their stances were quite positive. In this case, just 5% expressed a neutral position against the 95% who agreed and totally agreed with this statement. In other words, both questions demonstrate that students' perspectives and attitudes towards autonomy have turned into something positive throughout the online learning process. Moreover, they have become more aware about the significance of being autonomous, not just in times where face-to-face -face instruction and guidance are not possible, but as part of a new educational system that requires to be resilient and flexible upon unpredictable times. Now, finally, to look at the conclusions and future research opportunities. The first Thing we noticed in this research uh, activity was a change in learner perception towards autonomous learning. Though autonomous learning was always seen as useful, the reality during this period has been that is now being seen as a desirable tool for becoming a better learner. Also, students are seeing autonomous learning abilities as being important in their future role as primary school teachers. So 
this is demonstrating a change in emphasis from their more immediate needs of learning classroom skills. They now are appreciating the fact that they also need to equip their students with autonomous learning skills as well and how useful they could be. It was, uh, it was interesting to know how autonomous learning is seen to impact upon others. So not only are the primary teacher trainers themselves being uh, asked to change their ways of learning into more autonomous approaches, we are seeing an impact upon their families, their friends, and also, of course, the children that they are planning to teach. All of these people, the whole education family, let's say, are um, being affected by this. And finally, the final point to, to make about this project has been how the teacher or the researcher has perceived autonomous learning. Originally, this mode of learning was thought of as being complementary to a traditional face-to-face -face teaching. The initial research that we made in this project saw that blended learning was being seen as a future um, model that would be able to accommodate exponential student growth that is happening in the Escuelas Normales and particularly in my school where we are being asked to accommodate more and more students but with the same facilities and the same classroom availability. Now because of this change with the pandemia and a more autonomous approach we are seeing a shift in perception that and a recognition that autonomous learning may in fact in the future be an integral part of all learning forms and not exclusive to any one sphere. So this shift in perception, I believe, we believe, may well be a very interesting future research idea. Thank you very much.